Hello everyone, welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for two, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, January 30th, 2019. Thank you so much for being here, guys. This is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. It is not sun, science specific, any sort of science specific, sun, moon, rising, Venus, whatever. Um, it's also not love or career specific. This is not just for soulmates. It's not just for twin flames. This is for everyone, okay? This is a collective message, collective guidance for the day. Now, just because it comes through today doesn't mean it actually has to be something that happens today. Energies are fluid. Yes, this could be something that happened in the past. This could be happening, something that's happening in the future. It could also be something that's not going to happen for you at all. Who knows? You know, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. But either way, let's get to it. Alrighty. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Wednesday, January 30th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So let's see what we've got for today. For today. It's almost February. Like. We're almost in February. <laughs> Time is, is like. flying by but then also creeping by like it's, it's weird it's it's weird but hey such is life right <laughs> i don't even know what i'm talking about <laughs> spirit's like yes you do eric shut up <laughs> anyway okay we get one more shuffle and then we're gonna get straight into it Alrighty, guys. Wednesday, January 30th. What is that? What is that? How did that happen? Don't mind me. Just messing with my manicure. Here. Here we go. Wednesday, January 30th. Best message, please, spirit. Okay. Ooh. All right. Here we go. Oh. Well, that sure is a lot. Hanged man. And good. Golly. Okay. Here we go, guys. Underneath the deck, you have the Seven of Wands. So, defensiveness, boundaries, uh, blockage. Blockage, blockage, blockage. Okay. We have the King of Wands and the Five of Pentacles with the Three of Cups. And then we have all this mess down here. Death, the emperor, the hanged man, with the three of swords, the queen of pentacles, and the queen of wands. My, my, my. So we have the counterparts on the table here. Good golly. Okay, so we could be talking twin flames here. We could be. Is anything is possible? This is a general reading. But what I feel like is happening here is some sort of blockage got the best of someone and backfired in their face. <laughs> wow. Blocking you or you blocking them in some way has backfired for someone, for a group of people. Um, what I'm seeing here is this is mostly on the masculine side. Maybe they blocked you first or um, you blocked them as a result of their actions. 
Okay, you have, okay, so what, what's symbolizing this blockage here is the Seven of Wands. Now, that's one of the reasons why, or that's one of the things that this Seven of Wands is speaking to energetically, um, some sort of blockage, like blocking somebody on social media, that's what I mean. But now, but what, what it's also saying, it's talking about boundaries, okay? The, ultimately, greater boundaries have been put in place in this situation against someone, is what Spirit is saying. And now, they just said they're taking it as a blockage. Now you're taking it as a blockage, like it's, it's blocking the flow of communication within this relationship. The masculine side of the, of the situation here feels somewhat left out. Now, I'm getting a few things from this situation. One, this person left you out in favor of the social scene, the social setting here with the three of cups and the five of pentacles. And now they're, and now I feel like in, in that case, you have taken your power back in a sense and now kind of put up a wall between you and them and now they can't get to you. And it backfired on them because they expected to be able to just get to you whenever they want, bring you back in whenever they want, communicate with you whenever they want, and now they can't do that. So now, in essence, they feel left out in the cold. There's also a situation specifically that Spirit is wanting me to mention where this person that's represented by the King of Wands... Um, has been ha favored some sort of social setting and now they've left him out of the cold like they make him feel he feels rejected by them in some way oh and i when i say he i say the king of wands that's just energy it's not gender okay it could be a woman who is embodying this king of wands energy and you don't have to be a twin flame to resonate with this I mention Twin Flame because I see the King of Wands and the Queen of Wands as a minor arcana depiction of the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine in the whole Twin Flame situation, okay? But it doesn't have to be that. Think of this as a situation as someone that embodies, it's the counterpart, okay? Someone that embodies the masculine energy and someone that embodies more of the masculine energy, someone that embodies more of the feminine energy. Now, <laughs> We have a mutual energy in the center of this. And it's a big fucking energy, guys. It's death, the emperor, and the hanged man. Both of you, if you're resonating with this so far, both of you are exhibiting this, are feeling this, are experiencing this. This is big. This is kind of scary when I think about it. Feeling the, 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 the thought of feeling in this place here with death the emperor and the hanged man feels a little scary why because there is a huge lesson that's being learned here on controlling aspects of your nature basically what the universe is saying to me with this is yeah you think you're in control you think you're going to control every little minute detail of this let me show you just how much control you have. You're going to go through a transformation. And you're going to be stuck in your pride and ego. Death. The emperor. You're going to try and control it. It's not going to work. And you're just going to be suspended here. Until you get it. The hanged man. Both of you are dealing with this, but it, but depending on which side of the equation. Now, okay, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be so doom and gloom. Depending on which side of the equation you're on, I, if you were the one that was trying to be the controlling aspect here and control someone else and the nature of the relationship, you're getting the the, the brunt of this lesson. For the other person. You're dealing with control in the sense of you've been in the process of taking your life back, taking your power back, and now the universe is trying to be like, okay, wait, slow down. 
because you actually are more in control of your life than you thought originally but you're still not going to be able to control everything because I feel like for some of you there was almost it's almost like an overcompensation whereas you were heavily in the energies of the empress which would be the divine feminine which would also be the counterpart to the emperor you the pendulum has pendulum has swung and you kind of maybe over swang or overstepped into the emperor energy tried to take too much control tried to really control too much at once and the universe is like wait slow down we understand we get your zealousness but slow down it's not as bad as you think okay but for the other one other person that was more in this emperor energy there is a serious death happening here a serious ego death happening here and like I said the universe is saying you're not going to get out of this until you learn the lesson and that is you cannot control everything the only thing you can control are your own actions and to be quite honest it's your own actions that have gotten you here to begin with so <laughs> I mean hey don't shoot the messenger guys all right So then we get into this final row here. This is the counterpart. This is the feminine, the queen of wands to the masculine, king of wands. You have three of swords, a queen of pentacles, and a queen of wands. Now, if you see here, the queen of pentacles did not come out in reverse this time. She most likely has turned back over. But she's turned over with a vengeance. Because she's got the Queen of Wands behind her. Well, in front of her, whatever. She's got the Queen of Wands at her side now. And the Queen of Wands, let me tell you, she'll set fire to some shit real quick. Real quick. I don't remember how this one so Did this go this way? Yes, it was this way. But you see... They're both, they're all facing this way, right? They're all facing a certain way. The King of Wands has a bit of rejection, loneliness, and um, a toxic social scene behind him. It's all behind him. He's not facing it. He's carrying on with the show, even though he's he's got all this behind him. Whereas the queens, the queens are looking right at this heartbreak, saying, I never want to face this again. And she's doing something about it. Whereas the king is just like, whatever. It's not even a big deal. Oh, but it is. Because you see, when you don't face it, it's just going to fester and keep happening in your life. The Queen of Wands and Pentacles is very, very aware of that and has no intentions of manifesting any of this ever again. I got to get my clarifying cards. I left them in my bag because I took them to class with me yesterday. I take my cards with me all the time. But I want to get into some, some clarification now. I mean, and... I don't want to sound so like spirit stopping. It's like, Eric, what are you talking about? Yes, you do. It is. I mean, it's, it's not, I'm, I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to trigger anybody, but if I'm triggering people, then okay, that's a good thing. In all honesty, it's a good thing. But this is another situation in which like what goes around comes around. At least that's what I'm seeing when I look at this seven of wands. And for many of you that have blocked in response, it's not even like, I mean, for some of you, it was malicious and vindictive. It's like, okay, well, you blocked me. Now I'm going to block you. But for the most part, it really kind of wasn't about that. It was like, I'm blocking you now. Like, I'm, I'm actually making the conscious decision to block you now because 
this is a toxic relationship. This is not healthy. And this is not something that I want in my life. This is not something that I want to associate with. And I'm looking at this emperor here, and yeah, he's getting his just desserts. What goes around comes around. Now you've been labeled the toxic one, and you kind of have to have that on you until you do something about it. But you see, this king of wands ain't doing shit about it. He's not even facing it. It's almost as if, wow, it's almost as if what I just saw here was the queens, the queen of pentacles and wands in this situation are, are like bleeding with their scars. It's like they're wearing their hearts on their sleeves. They're wearing their scars for everyone, for everyone to see. And it's not even like it's a pride or ego thing. Sure, it's kind of a badge of honor, but at the same time, it's like, no, I've been through some shit and I have no intentions of hiding it. Whereas the king of wands or this masculine energy here is just trying to save face. But there's a big transformation happening. <laughs> Death, the emperor, the hanged man is in the center of the situation. There's a transformation happening. Okay. So let's get some clarification now. We're going to start with the king of wands, five of pentacles, and the three of cups. Let's see what we got. And I am using the epic tarot to clarify. It is available at Om Shanti Bookshop, both in store and online. You can find it, you can find the link to their website in my description box, yes? One more shuffle here. Alrighty, King of Wands, Five of Pentacles, Three of Cups. Here we go. Please clarify. King of Wands, Five of Pentacles, Three of Cups. Okay. Nine of Pentacles. Well, someone sure likes, yeah, damn it. See, Five of Swords. Someone sure likes their independence. Oh, look. Now the Three of Pentacles. Self-mastery. Okay. Entrepreneurship. All right. But we have the Five of Swords here. Oh, look at that. I, God, if that, wow, I saw that coming too. King of Wands. Clarifying the King of Wands. Now this deck is different. This deck, um, the court cards are animals. So kings are, are dragons, queens are phoenixes, knights are griffins, and unicorns are pages, okay? Ten of Swords, King of Wands. Oh look. The Page of Wands in reverse. And the Queen of Cups in reverse. Wow. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just taking a moment to take this in because it's just like I'm reading the energies here and it's like, wow, this is really quite perfect. So someone was hell-bent or maybe still is hell-bent on living a bachelor's life with the Five of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Ten of Swords. But it seems to me that that's coming to an end with this Ten of Swords here. Okay, um, well, maybe not. What's, okay, wait, let me clarify. What's coming to an end? Some sort of situation is coming to an end with the Ten of Swords, and it's not ending well. And it's a, po it's a situation in which this person is absolutely getting what they just getting the, what they deserve, getting their just desserts, reaping what they've sown. They're still, they're going to remain single. But see, that's the thing. It's not like it's all that bad because, and this is kind of, I guess, what this person wants. Um, with the Nine of Pentacles, yes, that's a single card, but it's also a card of autonomy, abundance, 
you know, hard work well done, rewards, re I'm sorry, rewards for hard work well done. But that doesn't feel good in this sense between the Five of Swords and the Ten of Swords because it's like there was, there was too much competition, but it wasn't just competition. It was one-upmanship. Competition on overdrive, in a sense. Coupled with that, you have the King of Wands again with the Page of Wands in reverse and the Queen of Cups in reverse. Okay? Um, someone is refusing to do any sort of self-discovery to look within at all and to identify what it is it's they're feeling or they're going on along with. They're completely ignore, ignoring their emotions altogether and keeping up this pride and ego like saving face type energy with the King of Wands. Almost as if they're saying, I don't need emotion. I don't need love. But it's, uh, let me tell you, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, that is a facade. Because that queen, that king of, that king of wands is full of shit. <laughs> he is so full of shit. And with the queen of cups being present here, that's exactly what it's saying. Because you see how in this deck, look, look, look. So the page is a unicorn. And, and in this deck, wands is books. And then um, the queen is a phoenix. This Queen of Cups being here is saying, is staring you right in your face and saying, now you know you have emotions. But you're just going to stuff them down? Okay. Self-mastery is needed here. But instead of self-mastery, someone is focusing on some sort of entrepreneurship. Someone is focused on business, pentacles, some sort of teamwork aspect, some job in which they're a part of a team. And to be quite honest, if they were to do this emotional work, if they were to open up their compassion, they'd probably be better at this team situation. I don't know who that was for. I just picked that up randomly, but. Okay, so instead of doing the middle row next, I wanna go down to this feminine energy next, the Three of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Wands. And then, because this energy in the middle is mutual, both sides of the equation are experiencing this. So let's see, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, Three of Swords, please, Spirit. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Fucking right. Oh, wow. Okay, we have the Eight of Cups underneath the deck. <laughs> Walking away. You have the Page of Cups here. And you have the Ace of Books or the Ace of Wands. So this person is taking their cup, is starting over, going somewhere else, and is writing a whole new book. It's, maybe you're starting a new chapter, maybe. Because that was the first thing I heard. But I really wanna say that I feel like you're planning on writing a whole new book. And this Page of Cups energy, this feels like you, whoever, well, if this is you, um, or this person is literally like taking their cup and moving on in an innocent, in an innocent way. It's like, I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to get jaded on love. I still believe in love. I still believe that there's a good connection out there and I'm going to go find it. I almost want to cry in saying all that. I'm going to find it. Ace of Cups. Fucking right. Damn right, Ace of Cups. Because this person down here has learned to love themselves. Four of Swords, okay. The Wheel of Fortune. The Ten of Cups. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, just because you may have gotten your heart broken, it does not mean you cannot survive. Ace of Cups, Wheel of Fortune, Ten of Cups. The more that you love yourself, this is literally what I'm seeing in these three cards right here. The more you focus on your own cup of love and filling that cup and maintaining that cup, keeping that cup full on up and full, you actively influence the wheel of fortune to turn in your favor. 
and to help you manifest this Ten of Cups that you've been seeking. It's like an energy of it being of this being an escrow. So it's almost like a three of wands situation where you've put the investment in and now you're waiting for the return on the investment, but you are continuing to main to, to, to put energy and effort into it to continue to keep the momentum going. And here, so but here it's represented by the by the ten of wands. I'm sorry, not the ten of wands. The wheel of fortune, not the three of wands. It is you have got the wheel spinning, and now you're flowing energy into the wheel to keep it spinning. Although it's like, but as I'm saying that, it's like, gee, do you really want to like keep the wheel spinning? Is it gonna stop somewhere? I don't. I, it's hard to explain. It's like the more the wheel spins, the more momentum you have it going in this positive way, the more you get back in a positive manner. Does that make sense? You have two tens down here for this person, this queen of pentacles, queen of wands with the three of swords. You got two tens, 10, 10, wheel of fortune, 10 of cups. Now you, both sides of the equation have tens. However, Whereas this person with the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands has the Ten of Cups and the Four of Swords with the Ten of, with the Wheel, is it just a Ten? So Ten of Cups and Four of Swords, resting, healing, meditating. This person up here with this King of Wands has the Ten of Swords with the Five of Swords. An ending, yes, an ending, ending nonetheless, but it is nasty. It is not nice. It is not a nice ending. And this person up here might be lashing out at people because of it. I don't know if you just heard my stomach. <laughs> okay, so now let's, let's, let's clarify. Let's look into this mutual energy here. Because this person has walked away. Either has walked away or is walking away. This queen of wands. The queen to the king of wands, yes. So let's see, transformation, the emperor taking your power back, but learning with the hanged man not to, 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 to not need to control everything. Knowing when control is necessary and can be expressed and learning when to let go, right? Please clarify, spirit. Death, the emperor and the hanged man Strength, yeah, you see? Two of Pentacles. Okay. Underneath the deck, you have the Ace of Pentacles. It is a new beginning. It is a new start for both sides of the equation. It's a new start. Now, it's something that moves slowly. Um, it is the Ace of Discs. In this deck, it's Discs. Okay? Or but, it, uh, uh, but Pentacles, too. It's the same thing. But here... You're, oh gosh, you're moving into a new existence and depending on which side of the equation you're on, it's going to give you different results. Both of you, however, are just trying to balance out, maintain the space. You might feel like you're in between worlds right now. You might be, feel like you're in between phases in your life. A lot of us are feeling that way. Um, but here you have strength. Uh, the two of pentacles with strength, act, act with strength actually feels good. The Two of Pentacles is about balance, maybe juggling, but with strength here, it's about um, taming the beast within, right? Um, restraint, having control, balance, which is what the Two of Pentacles can represent as well. You have, oh, then you've got the Two of Swords, oof, with the Knight of Wands. See, that's a griffin. And, oof, the Knight of Cups. <laughs> wow. Wowie, wow, wow. So somebody's really moving forward here. Passionately. Lovingly. I've heard indiscriminately, though. Okay, so that could be, first of all, for the person that is in this, that is represented by the King of Wands. Indiscriminately moving forward. That would not have, that would not include the Knight of Cups. It would absolutely be the Knight of Wands, though with the Two of Swords, not facing it, 
I'm not facing it. I'm not dealing with this. I don't care. You can say what you want about me. I don't care. I know who I am. Do you know who you are? Do you? Are you sure about that? Or are you just juggling? Two of pentacles, two of swords. Hmm. Now, for others, strength, knight of cups, knight of wands, someone is really just like, fuck this. I don't deserve this. I'm going somewhere that I will be appreciated and loved. I'm taking my cup and I'm taking my heart and I'm moving on. That's fantastic. All right. I need some clarification. Well, not clarification. I do that all the time. Uh, Oracle guidance now. We're going to start with the animal spirits. messages from the animal spirit guides here we go here we go here we go 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 here we go here we go <laughs> oh yes oh yes let's fine leave it that way we have mouse and we have octopus mm-hmm I'm gonna start with mouse, I think, unless water comes first. I think water comes first, actually. Nope, earth, good, okay, mouse. Underneath the deck was um, beaver also, but we'll see, let's read mouse first. Detail-oriented, small-minded, nitpicky, nervous. The mouse has an innate desire to tend to the details. It often spends its days fixing, preparing, organizing, and scrutinizing. Unfortunately, a mouse personality doesn't know, notice when they've gone too far. Soon they begin to have a limited and fearful vision of life and try to control every detail. Jeez. This can be quite a painful experience for both the mouse and those around them. When mouse energy is at play, step back for a moment. It may be time to find a more purposeful project to delve into, one that's worthy of your exacting eye. When in balance, mouse is organized, resourceful, and prepared. When out of balance, mouse is busy with no purpose. To bring into balance, one must embark on a meaningful project. Gee, guys. Gee, guys. So then, finally, we have octopus. Octopus. Reaching, yearning, lacking boundaries and direction. The octopus signifies a wonderfully perceptive mind paired with a lack of healthy boundaries. Unfortunately, this results in a well-intended but messy relationships. The octopus entwines itself into other people's business and shares their own without restraint. They believe that's what it means to be, quote, close. If you notice, after spending time with someone that you feel drained or uneasy, the essence of octopus is at play. Begin to establish healthy boundaries. Be patient and firm. It may be a very old habit to change. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. And we're gonna we're gonna close the reading with the Crystal Mandala deck, says Spirit. Mm-hmm. Dee be dee be doo. You get back you get back in there. Okay, here we go guys. Closing message. Closing message, please. Spirit for today, Wednesday, January 30th. Yes. Okay, rest is underneath the deck. It's okay. Do that. But then we have card number 41, goddess Ishtar and Astrophilite. Daring Rebirth. Mm. 
There, wait, wait, there it is. Okay, here we go. Here we go, kids. Daring Rebirth. We bring you the empowerment of Daring Rebirth. The bold spirit in you claims the divine defiance of the phoenix. It refuses defeat at every turn. No matter who or may or what may seek to overpower your spirit, your peace, your loving heart, and your wild optimism, you shall triumph with a divine and daring rebirth. Do not limit yourself with expectations, whether from another or your own mind. There is no such there is so much possible for you, a radically different and new you to become. Believe and so shall it be. Hmm. I think that's, yeah, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Now, because there's one thing that was coming through here for me that I wanted to say. This can be, this can go either way. Because as I was reading it, I was picking up an energy of the other person, the one that was in the super controlling stage, could be taking that as like, well, yeah, you're not going to overpower me. But that's kind of what the universe is trying to break you out of. Because instead, it, it sorry, I just hit the mic. Sorry if that affected you. Um, because instead of you keeping your power to you and doing what it is you know you want to do and, you know, maintaining your autonomy, you are seeking to overpower others probably to make yourself feel better. And that's not gonna work. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And I hope you have a great Wednesday. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah, take care. Bye.